Boxing King Media and Association with boxer Mr Roy Jones Jr. Uh, initially, I just want to start off by your reaction to that press conference. Uh, a lot of back and forth. You've seen it all and been there, done it all before. I love it. Uh, that kind of back and forth is what inspires people to be ready for a real fight. Uh, without the back and forth, the fight could be kind of boring. When you got that kind of back and forth, now you got something. How do you find Chris as a personality? Because a lot of fans are starting to like uh, what comes out of his mouth. You got to understand, to me, he's the most calm. Um, he's calm, but he's very precise with his words. He's an economical guy with words. You understand me? He knows how to use less words and say way more than anybody I know. He can take five words and make it mean way more than anybody else I've met. So he's brilliant when it comes to pre-fight hype or pre-fight arguments. Does he remind you of anyone from back in your day that was that kind of calm, cool and collected? No, nobody I knew that was that calm and collected. I was calm and collected, but not many other people were. A lot of fans are expecting him to box on the outside like he did against Liam Williams. Uh, obviously, that's the way he kind of fought when he fought under, under you last time. Um, are you wanting him to trade with this guy inside or are we expecting that kind of fight? Well, for me, man, I like the fact that he can do whatever he wants to do. But boxing last time was because A, he hurt his hand. B, the guy who was fighting, all we had to do was put knuckles on him and he would go down. We knew that coming in. So it was a different style of a fight. This fight... It all be depending upon what Liam does. If Liam comes out and wants to fight, then we being a bigger fighter, we can't back away from that. You understand me? But if Liam don't want to fight and want to box, then we know how to go into boxing mode and do that too. So the good thing about Chris is he can match anything that Liam wants to do. Was there any issues on your side when obviously he didn't use you for his last fight and then obviously he's brought you back for this fight? Are your relationship still cool? No, he called me before the last fight and said, man, if I can't, I mean, he said, I really, I really would like my father to work my corner this time because you know the nature of the situation. I said, heck yeah, this fight wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you, you and your father and his father. And I really want to see both fathers in the corner because that would have made it even bigger for me to watch. I've been so glad to see Chris Eubank, Senior, and Junior in the corner versus Connor and Nigel being in the corner. You understand? That would have been... I would have been happy to see that. So how can I get upset? Because he said, oh, well, this time, I know what that is. I'm looking at it. That makes the whole event bigger if the both of the fathers are there. So, no, I was, he, and he asked me, you know, he cleared up with me right away. So it's like, yeah. But it's like certain things are just about respect. He gave me the proper respect and asked me if it was cool. He just said, you no, know, he'd rather have his father in the corner for that fight. That's respect. I, I appreciate that. And he said, after that, you still my head trainer. So when he called me and said, okay, we got Liam Smith next, let's go. Kind of like right now, I'm in a turmoil where, you know, it's like, I ain't going to talk about it, but it's all good, yes. That's good. And I just want to quickly get your uh, thoughts on when Anthony Joshua phoned you and discussed you potential training uh, with him. Uh, how did that conversation go? What was he saying and what was the back and forth like? He didn't phone me. We met in uh, Dubai okay. or Abu Dhabi. And we talked about it and uh, we said we'd come check me out when he come down here. But in the meanwhile, he still was going to check out other people. And he went to America and checked out Derek James. When I found out he was checking out Derrick James, I know Derrick James, and I know Derrick James is a good trainer. He got tra just got trained a year. So I said, you know, if you feel comfortable with Derrick James, don't waste your time coming here. Let's go ahead and stay with Derrick. Because Derrick is also a great trainer. You just need somebody where you feel comfortable so that you can learn. And if you're comfortable there, stay there. And that, that was my text to him. He never texted me back, but that's why I texted him. Just want to ask you one off the cuff question. When you fought Mike Tyson in that exhibition, that you know the amount of fans that tuned in worldwide, uh, did you share any funny conversations with Mike himself? You know, uh, before or even after the after the fight, you know, between yourselves privately that you can maybe share with the fans. No, just Mike's a very good guy, very smart guy. Uh, Mike's a still a very strong guy. We both knew and understood that they said, "Don't go out there and tear each other head off. We're gonna stop if y'all going hard to hit. Y'all too old for that." But y'all can dig the body much as you want, and you can hit to the head. But if you try to tear each other head off, if we see that, we stop it. So we both understood that, and that's just what it was. Could we ever see Jones Tyson too? I don't know. It all depends about what Mike want to do. I don't like draws, so you know, he said, "Hey, let's fix that draw." It's gonna be hard for me to say no, but other than that, nah, I doubt it. Roy, it's an honor speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you.